This is the Open Source Entrepreneur Network Podcast with me, your host, John Mark Walker. Today we're here to talk about the OpenEBS project. It's an open source project to create a containerized storage system. We'll talk about the company that makes that project, CloudBite, and to help guide us through this conversation will be Kiran Mova and Uma Makara. They'll talk about how they went down the open source product path and the very new 0.3 release that they're very excited about. This newest release takes OpenEBS further down the path of container orchestration and Kubernetes. Okay, great, John. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to reintroduce myself. This is Uma Mukara. I'm co-founder of CloudBite uh, and also the acting CEO of. Um, yes, it's great to be here. Hi. Hey, John. Uh, great to be here. Uh, uh, and nice talking to you again. Uh, though I'm in the capacity of uh, VP of Engineering, and I've been with CloudBite for five years now, uh, I actually prefer calling myself as an open source hacker or an open source evangelist. Uh, All right. That's my passion. Excellent. That, that, that makes me very happy, actually, to hear that. I, <laughs> so, yeah, there, there aren't too many people who go by that uh, anymore. So, uh, so I, I appreciate that. Thank you. So I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to take some time out of your day uh, to come by and, and talk more about uh, some uh, events you have coming up, some uh, recent news that you're you want to talk about and then we're going to dive into you know what kind of company that you want to run what kind of product and what value you offer to your customers so i think you guys have some slides kicked off ready to go so why don't you take that away and then we'll uh and then we'll talk about it afterwards sure sure hi this is Puma again um so what is open ebs as a model word of mouth um to say it, it's containerized storage for containers. Uh, just like uh, Calico Flannel is defining the networking space for Kubernetes, OpenEBS wants to own that space for storage, right? Um, that is, is probably the most popular open source storage project right now, uh, but we believe that um, you know we will be the purpose-built storage solution for containerized storage, right? And you can also say that, you know, um, just like you're going to run Kubernetes, I'll be running OpenEBS. Uh, that will be as easy as running Kubernetes. And in the end, what we want to achieve with OpenEBS is uh, if you're a storage operator or a DevOps uh, developer, you want to get the storage part of the operations off your back, right? Um, that's that's the real essence of OpenEBS. And um, really, what is OpenEBS uh, is we really want to solve the persistent storage problem for stateful applications in the container space. Uh, typically, as you'll see, um, the storage has been you know been attached as a legacy storage to application pods uh, running in containers. But uh, that's not the approach that we're taking with OpenEBS. Uh, what we will be doing with OpenEBS is to containerize the volumes and move it up, move them up into the application parts, so that uh, the volumes and the containers they all stay together. And when you move an application part, the storage volume also moves. <clears throat> so, in other words, uh, we will be solving the problem of persistent storage. Um, that's catching a quite uh, 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 quite an imagination in the few uh, quarters, I would say, right? So it's not uh, the connectivity alone that uh, OpenEBS is trying to solve. Kubernetes, fortunately, is bringing the right architecture for connecting uh, the storage, the persistent storage to the, the containers. But we will also be uh, considering giving the right solution in terms of the enterprise availability and also the smart space management and latency management QoS, all these enterprise features will now be available with open source uh, project uh, like OpenEBS, right? 
So, uh, in, in other words, um, Kubernetes, we all know, has solved the problem of orchestration for stateless application, right? Uh, it, it's so simple with the Kubernetes that you put all your in intent into the configuration YAML file, and then Kubernetes drives it into the rollout, right? So, but what about the stateful applications? It's not uh, as easy as the stateless world today. Right. Uh, the storage can be connected, but underlying storage is hardwired into various tiers, and you still need to, um, you know, do a handful of work to get things going with the stateful applications. So with OpenEBS, it's it's going to be a, a total different story. Uh, with OpenEBS, stateful applications and stateless applications will almost be similar for a DevOps user. Right. You still express your intent uh, for the stateful application storage, and OpenEBS does the rest of it, right? Uh, it's going to take the right policies and then going to schedule the volumes on the right storage, keep them available all the time, manage the latency expectations, and then uh, do the backend storage operations itself. Um, in other words, um, for the DevOps operation, OpenEBS is going to take all the storage burden off your back, right, uh, with OpenEBS they will see the storage administrators uh, you know, saying it's, it's pretty easy to um, roll the applications into the production. That's what we want to go to. And uh, to quickly, uh, how we have built OpenEBS, and uh, we're still early stage, but I would, I would talk about how we have built this OpenEBS. Um, as, as I said, it's a containerized storage, and containerization of storage is done using Docker. And we are going to uh, deeply integrate the orchestration into Kubernetes. Whatever Kubernetes can do, um, we will make complete use of it. And there are some things that you know, Kubernetes may not be doing right now uh, for the underlying storage platform. Uh, that will be fulfilling using OpenEBS Maya. Uh, the, the capabilities of Maya will include smart capacity management underneath. Um, you know, latency management, and then it will be exposing uh, AWS, EDS like APIs, and deep storage analytics, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, uh, is going to be provided by OpenVS Maya. And of course, there is storage underneath. Um, the core storage is OpenEBS. Uh, it will be providing <coughs> the containerized storage, but um, a, a lot of enterprise features such as uh, high availability, smart storage, uh, QoS, and they will have the volume expansion across multiple nodes, and then this hot data, cold data tiering for higher performance will, will always be there. Uh, that's a bit about uh, OpenEBS, and uh, probably Kiran can you know, talk a little bit more about how we have done uh, in terms of uh, uh, the OpenEBS buildup by showing a demo to you. So just one uh, quick, just one quick question. So if I if I understand correctly, uh, the uh, OpenEBS is both a control plane as well as a storage platform itself. It's, so you're in both the control and the and the data plane. Is that right? That's right, John. Okay, just want to make sure I understood. Thanks. Yes, the control the control fly and plane is is uh, provided in a combination of integration into Kubernetes and Maya. And the data plane and the core storage uh, uh, platform is provided by OpenEBS itself. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, this is how the OpenEBS roadmap looks like for 2017. We have a great vision for 2018 onwards and also 2019. But uh, uh, to quickly cover what we will be doing uh, this year, we are at uh, mid year uh, today. And uh, we are releasing 0 0.3, which has full hyper-converged integration with Kubernetes. This will be the release using which you can go ahead and deploy the hyper-converged storage for uh, deployments that are being orchestrated by Kubernetes. And um, uh, we will be working towards uh, adding more core storage features in the 0 0.4 version. Uh, that will include, uh, you know, uh, adding cache and the tiering and some amount of 
QoS uh, in the upcoming release. And for the 1.0 release that will come out in 2017, you'll probably have uh, the first version of open sourced enterprise storage uh, that will take care of uh, most of the storage needs for the DevOps operator. And uh, we are also uh, working towards uh, getting uh, more of uh, machine learning intelligence into storage. Um, uh, that that probably will be covered in 1.0 also. Uh, that that will that's a quick glimpse into the roadmap of OpenEBS. Of course, uh, we we building storage always is going to take time, which needs testing. And fortunately, uh, we got that experience in the last five years building enterprise storage. And we'll be putting all that expertise into uh, building open EBS going forward. Great. When you say you're looking to integrate machine learning, um, to what end? Like what 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 do the what are your, our customers going to get from that? Right. So the customers uh, are not going to be bothered about uh, what would be the amount of resources I need on a storage controller if I have to get a certain latency for my volumes. Right. That seems to be the most complex piece. Uh, when you increase uh, your expectations on performance, uh, what all changes I would need to be doing. Right. Um, so uh, through our machine learning engines, we will be predicting the application workloads um, uh, for uh, given volumes, and we'll be adjusting the resources automatically. So the guaranteed QoS delivery uh, will be delivered using this machine learning technology. So, uh, so you guys started Cloud Byte a few years ago, and this is kind of a recent transformation. Um, ah, there we go, thank you. Uh, and I was wondering, you know, what led you to this transformation? What, how did you kind of come about, come upon this kind of solution? And, and you know, where did you start from five years ago? I'd, I'd like to hear a lot about, you know, your evolution over the years. and and how you've been working with customers and how that informed you know, this decision. Sure. Either, um, either you can answer that. Great, yes, uh, that's a very good question, a very appropriate one, um, uh, John. So uh, when we started CloudBite, we wanted to build storage um, that can uh, give the quality of service to the service providers. And uh, uh, we actually containerized the storage uh, as a solution uh, to that problem of uh, giving a QoS demonstrated storage. The product has been uh, doing very well, but what uh, we learned from the market in the last few years is uh, the, the industry is moving towards uh, expecting open source solutions. Right, uh, Most of the CAOs that we talked to um, and the big architects, uh, they have uh, shown a penchant for open source solutions. Our previous solution was definitely not open source. It's a closed commercial right. uh, uh, based on FreeBSD. Um, so I think uh, that that shift that we observed quite a lot, and one another one is uh, people like developer friendly infrastructure, right? The DevOps ecosystem has been going through a lot of churn and um, the, the, the DevOps uh, shift and the open source shift led us to believe that we need to uh, recreate the right storage in open source, and that's what OpenEBS is. Okay, so you had a solution, it, it worked reasonably well, it served your customers, but along the way you said, you know what, there, there's a better angle here and we're gonna pursue that. That's right. Excellent, and, and how, what, how is the interaction with you know, users and the developer community so far? So in, if I had to just summarize in uh, one word, it's been a great learning experience and it's also been great. Uh, in the past uh, six months that we have come out openly with the 0 0.1 uh, release, uh, we have had a lot of traction from uh, different types of users uh, from different domains, uh, You know, some big enterprises uh, and also some very niche market, uh, especially people who are trying to come up with some new services on the container ecosystem, they would um, come to us and say, you know what, this is the storage solution that uh, we have been missing. Uh, so clearly there was 
a need for a container native storage uh, that was required. And I think we are um, is, uh, really well. Right. So we have been able to attract both users as well as um, uh, great developers and committers. Uh, you know, in fact, today I had uh, had a chance to chat with uh, one of the guys uh, who's working on a GoLand based GoTGT who is interested in learning how we are, how he can collaborate with OpenEBS and how he can uh, continue to contribute towards the milestones of OpenEBS. Great. That that's uh, you, you you really. That, that that is the kind of interaction you you want to get and that you want to achieve so it kind of uh, uh confirms that you know you're you're on the right track when you get you know that kind of uh, interaction going when you look at kind of the business model that you guys are going to pursue yeah you know uh, inevitably whenever um a startup is open source based you know the, the question that comes up from investors as well as the public at large is how are you going to make money on this? You know, you're giving away all this stuff for free. So, what's your what's your business model look like? Um, yeah, we, we're not going to be uh, any different uh, compared to the other successful open source business models. Uh, first off, uh, we want to build the right uh, infrastructure solution in the storage world, and when everything works right, and it definitely needs to be supported by the guys, you know were behind the project. So we would expect to make some um, uh, uh, monetary gains through the support of the uh, product. So we will definitely have an enterprise edition of OpenEBS uh, shortly after 1.0 or along mm -hmm. with 1.0. And uh, one another model that uh, we are uh, trying to um, introduce with uh, 1.0 is probably to the, the machine learning analytics, right? So the, our, our infrastructure for machine learning will still be open, but uh, the way uh, the predictions happen and um, the reactions uh, based on the predictions will be done only in the enterprise edition. Uh, that is one way we are thinking, but it will still evolve. So, uh, Certainly. So, so what I'm hearing is that and you're going to have the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, just to add to what Uma uh, said about the uh, ML service, uh, we are very uh, uh, careful about trying to keep this solution free. Uh, so even when we develop this ML service uh, for analytics, uh, with an, you, know, you know, standard service or like a, uh, vendor agnostic one so people should be able to develop their own analytics and interface with the infrastructure that we put in in the open source great so, so what i'm hearing is that you're going to have the core infrastructure is is, is free uh free software and will always be free but you're going to develop uh either some type of enterprise version uh, or some type of content or policy framework that you know sits on top of the uh you know the core infrastructure pieces that you open source Yes, that's correct. Okay, that's a tried and true model, and I, I uh, wholly, uh, wholly support that. Excellent. Um, so, is this your first real open source project for both of you? That's correct, John. Was was it a scary experience to go down this path? Uh, it, it, not really. You know, the ecosystem around open source uh, has been developed a lot. Um, there's plenty of material available. And we've been guided uh, through Evan Powell uh, right from the beginning of uh, OpenEBS uh, project. He's one of the co-founders of this project. So he has built uh, you know, an Accenture and StackStorm projects in open source. Yes. So we are very happy to be guided um, by experts like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a scary experience in the beginning and uh, our journey has been excellent so far. And we've been receiving uh, great support from the community. Well, here's hoping that you see uh, even more support going forward. And uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. I'll definitely be uh, paying attention uh, to what you're doing. It looks like a pretty exciting project. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time to, to come by the Open Source Entrepreneur Network. I uh, look forward to uh, maybe having a follow-up later to see how things are going. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Excellent.